What's good everybody, it's your boy Everton. So today we're talking about root car insurance and why after being with them for two years, I'm out. Like, Audi, peace out, not coming back. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So guys, I've actually been with root car insurance for two years and I am definitely canceling my policy at the end of this renewal period. Um, I'm gonna go into the reason why. Um, a lot of people did warn me about it. Uh, so I'll talk about, you know, essentially my experience what it was like, what happened, what may have contributed toward it, and um, my ultimate re reason for you know leaving. And if I would actually recommend, like if I would do this process all over again, like you know, would I do anything different? Let's go ahead and talk about it. So I actually signed up with Root in January, late January of 2021, and I did it the same way that everyone else does it. So you have to sign up with the app, give it permission to basically track you your entire life, and once you do that, you take the driving test. Now the driving test is fairly simple. A couple pointers if you guys are looking towards like getting onto this plan. It is the driving test, it basically tracks you and your habits while you're driving for about two weeks. Could be a little bit longer or it could be a little bit shorter based on if once you gather enough driving information. Now the three pointers are maintain a consistent schedule. Drive within well lit times and they're looking for consistency. Not necessarily if you're like following like everything that's out there. Like they don't know the speed limits of the areas that you're in and things like that. But if you go to a street and you drive there 30 miles per hour and the next day you drive 60 miles an hour, the next day you drive 12 miles an hour, it shows a inconsistency there. You know, do all the regular stuff like, you know, don't be on your phone and don't text while driving and don't do hard braking and harsh turns. They track all of that. But what they're really looking for is consistency, right? And you know, just normal safety things like drive during well lit hours. So after signing up, I had gotten a pretty good uh, offer for my premium for you know the service, and it undercut a lot of the competition. At the time, I was with Geico, and I was looking at other you know other carriers as well. And what I suspect that they do is they undercut like the norm of the premium that you typically would get. Now their principle of you know insuring people is that they insure good drivers and they insure them at a fair premium mine was was fair i felt like it was fair but i'm not sure how fair it was because it only undercut progressive at the time by like a couple bucks per month and when i say a couple i mean actually like two bucks per month but you know it was efficient enough for them to you know for me not to go with progressive and i wanted to go to this company to save the most amount of money now, while you are conducting the test drive, there are little challenges that they'll give you to help not only like making it more enjoyable, because I find them pretty easy and pretty engaging, but they also have these challenges that will can pay you out like real actual dollars. So when I combine it, like the things that I would do, like have to take a picture of my car and give and you know categorize some driving uh, experience that I had when I was traveling, say if I was driving or if I was not driving in the app, they would pay you out points for this. And these points would equate to about 20 bucks. So even though they were undercutting them by, let's say a total of like, they undercut progressive by a total of like maybe like 15 bucks. Once I completed certain exercises within the app, now I got 20 bucks that they would deposit into your bank account or you can choose to donate to charity or things like that. I did choose to put in my bank account. I was struggling at the time. I needed all that money for myself. So um, not only that, they would, so the undercutting was not only $15 now, it was more like $35. And you could repeat doing some of the like newer challenges that they introduced. And I think by that, by the time I had actually completed my, like all the challenges, they gave me back like a total of 60 bucks before I had even accepted my premium. So, you know, it was something that was, you know, I was like, wow, what, why wouldn't I stay? So at the time that I did sign up with them, I had a pretty like minimal insurance and I had a pretty older car. So I had a 2010 Honda Accord, great car, loved it. Um, but I did have since then upgraded my car. I have had any issues, no tickets, you know, anything like that. So, I, but I did add a new car and I also invested in a Toro vehicle, like a minivan and I put on there. So I had now a premium that was much higher because I was covering a newer car with more coverage and I had an additional vehicle as well. So my insurance premium did go up, but I was fairly okay with the amount of money that it was. It definitely seemed fair. And FY guys, I had tried to compare to other 
insurance carriers every about every six months because I was all about budget. Like I want the best rate for myself and they remain competitive. So I wanted to talk about really quickly how some of the things work while you have their service. So number one, after you get your quote, they do continue to essentially monitor your driving. Um, there are times where the app would say calculating or crunching the numbers when you weren't even, when, you, when I was just sitting in my apartment, it just thought that, hey, you're usually driving at this point in time, no one's it, so we're gonna start crunching the numbers. And then they would discard and say, hey, no, we're gonna add that off the record if they didn't see any travel activity. Everything is really made efficient through the app. If you wanna change your address, if you want to you know, do any upgrades or add on or removal of features, getting refunds, the app is the most efficient place to do it. They do have a website that you can log in and compared to some of the other websites that I've used like Geico, it's not as efficient as Geico's online like website. Their app is really geared towards making a lot of those changes and it incentivizes you to keep the app. They even come out and say, or they come out on some of my videos that I've made about root car insurance before, like, hey, you know, we encourage you to keep the app, right? And it's for their incentive. They can't tell you what the app to have, but you know, they can't encourage you. So one of the things I want to talk about is their referral system. Um, that is something that I personally had uh, had benefited from. Um, so essentially I do YouTube videos like this YouTube video and I talked about the fact that there was a referral program that they had that if you signed up with my link, you would, uh, you would get, you know, a discount on your premium. And I think it's a great plan. I think it's a great feature to have. Um, that way everybody both saves and you're kind of the advertiser for the company or an additional advertiser. And um, I had gotten up to 600 bucks of premium for referrals now in, in the, the very state by state, but they'll give you up to a thousand bucks. But after I got 600 bucks, they just basically stopped paying out. And I found it odd because essentially, you know, that the way I got mine was through YouTube and it had been like, I had been getting maybe like three or four us per week because my videos were, you know, attracting people who were signing up and getting quotes. Um, but I started to have about, I think I had like left with 23 um, people who I think the payout was like 20 bucks per or 30 bucks per. And I just stopped paying out. I did try to contact customer service about it. They weren't really that helpful. Um, they wanted me to tell them like who the person was that I was expecting the referral from. I was like, hey, it's through YouTube, I don't know. So, um, you know, it was just one of those things where it just wasn't efficient for me anymore. You could tell a few people, get some money back and, you know, help, have that help cut your cost of your premium down. I'll be honest with you, the amount of money that I made in the first six months, my premium actually didn't cost me anything. It offset it entirely. But as of the last probably eight or nine months, I have been having some changes within my driving patterns, right? Um, I work a lot more from home now than I did prior. So I'm traveling a lot less frequently. Um, and in fact, most of the things that I actually partake in are within a five mile radius. Like my grocery store is very close, my gym is very close, um, Target's really close, Best Buy is really close, the movie theater is really close. Uh, everywhere I go, for the most part, is within a five, like two to five mile radius. Um, so my driving has re been reduced drastically. Now, and during the time that I've had them, I haven't had any claims have had any tickets or nothing like that. But recently I did get my renewal notice and it told me that I was going up a few hundred dollars, right? Now I no longer have the Turo vehicle that I that I had before and I'm only covering my car insurance that I have right now with my personal vehicle. And I was really shocked at the amount that it went up. So I decided to do what I do every time I get a new insurance premium. I check the market, which I should suggest everyone do. I checked the market and all the other major like insurance carriers were discounted by 400 bucks. So for some reason, root car insurance was $400 more expensive. Now at this point in time in 2023, when I'm about to renew than they've ever been um, with when I compare it to all the national leaders and carriers. In fact, Geico is, you know, is the one that I'm going back to now and they're $400 cheaper. Um, it's just a significant increase, which I can't understand why, because my behavior has significantly reduced, which means I'm not driving my car as much, et cetera. Um, you know, I'm not going traveling as much distance. Um, everything was in a shorter, shorter area. And also, I've had a bit of issue with customer service and how knowledgeable they were. First, it's really initiated through a chat and then they initiate a phone call if they can't assist you through the chat. Um, it was just something that I didn't feel like 
I wanted to pay for experience. I mean, it's already a budget insurance provider. Some of those things become intolerable when you're charging more than nation leaders in certain industries, right? I've dealt with Gago before. I know the, the level of customer service and knowledge that they typically do have. Um, even though they don't have some of the perks that you guys have with, or Root has with the referrals and the challenges and the cash back and things, which those stop paying out, the customer service issues where I couldn't really talk to them when I wanted to, or they were less knowledgeable, just became a lot more intolerable. So at the end of everything, would you recommend Root Car Insurance today? I mean, if it saves you money and you're not one of these people who need to talk to customer service to your, you know, car or vehicle insurance provider, like once a month, then yeah. Like my, the downsides are the customer service is, you know, they're, they're, they operate like a budget company. Um, they're not really that knowledgeable. I haven't had any issues with claims, so I haven't had any claims, but at the same time, I've done research and I haven't heard any issues with them paying out on claims. Um, do I think that they're the best carrier out there? No, they're not. They're a budget carrier um, and they operate as such. Um, if it doesn't make sense financially, I would not be a part of this, right? The only reason I'm leaving is because the budget aspect of it doesn't make sense when you're charging me more money than a myth than a national leader. Um, so if it makes sense to you, um, definitely like, and I mean financial sense and you need that low uh, insurance, then yeah, it's definitely an option. I definitely say, you know, go for it. I am happy with the time that I was there. It's just that now it's time for me to leave. They told me, hey, in 45 days, your insurance premium is gonna go drastically up. So I went to another provider the same way I did with Geico, right? And I'm back with Geico now. And if Geico raises my insurance in two years, I will be leaving Geico as well to for another carrier. So yeah, I do feel like it was worth it with the perks and things that they give. But you know, guys, let me know. What's your experience with car insurance? Leave it in the comments. But until next time, I'm Everton, and I do videos Everton's way. Peace.